In this case study, we will focus on one single feature and experiment with different ways of creating it. That feature is going to be the recess marking on this rotary knob. I want to stress that the aim of this case study is not to find the most efficient way of creating this feature. Rather, this is a creative thinking exercise to come up with as many ways as possible and in the process, learn about the characteristics of the different tools and the problems that you might face. There are a surprising number of ways to create this seemingly innocuous feature. At this point, it might be a good exercise to pause the video and think of all the possible ways of creating this. This is going to be a longer video than usual. Clicking on the arrow besides the video time will bring up the timestamps of the different methods in a visual way on the right side panel. This will allow you to navigate to the relevant method easily. Right off the bat, I can say that the most obvious and quickest method is to create a cross-sectional sketch and extrude. Let's create this sketch on the right plane, which bisects the model. I need to create an offset from the top. In order to do that, we need to project these three edges first. Press P for project and select these three edges. Go to Modify, Offset. With the Change Selection option checked, select all three projected lines and adjust the offset accordingly. Close off the sketch profile with two lines. There is no trimming required. At this point, the profile is embedded within the solid. In order to select it, hover the cursor over the profile, press and hold the mouse until a window pops up. Select the profile. Start the extrude command and perform a symmetrical cut. For our first alternative method, we will stick with the extrude command. I have prepared a sketch here at the top that actually traces the outline of the recess if we look from the top. Select the profile and start the extrude command. If we drag down into the solid, this will just produce a cut normal to the rectangular profile. In order to produce a cut that follows the surface, we need to go to Extend and choose Two Object. Let's first try to select this face. At this point, the extrude is taking reference only from this face. In order to get the extrude to take reference also from these two adjacent faces, we need to select the Chain Faces option. Set the offset distance. You will need to add a negative sign in front to achieve a cut. For extent, instead of choosing a surface, we can also choose a whole body. Let's remove the selected object. Hovering the cursor over a surface highlights the surface. If we hover over an edge, notice how the whole body gets highlighted. Clicking at this point will select the whole body. When you select a body, you are presented with a minimum or maximum option. Since we want to take reference from the face that is nearer to the sketch, we should choose the minimum option. Set the offset and confirm. Let's take a look at the cross section. In this case, the bottom face of the recess is actually vertical. This is not surprising, as the extrude command works in a direction that is normal to the sketch plane. To rectify this, we can use the move command. Go to modify, move copy. Select faces as the move object and select this face. Select rotate as the move type. Select this edge as the axis. This will serve as a pivot. Adjust the angle accordingly. Let's try extruding from the front. I have prepared a sketch that traces the outline of how the recess would look like from the front. For extent, choose two object. As before, we can select either the surface or the body. Let's select the body and enter an offset. This gives us an error. The problem is that we are trying to perform an extruded cut in a direction that is parallel to this surface. We will get the same error 
if you choose a surface. In order to make this work, we will need to create a helping surface that would act as a termination face. Let's create a sketch for this termination face on the right plane. This will be the same sketch as the one that you will create while doing the simple extrude at the start. Except that this time, there is no need to close off the sketch at this end, since the extrude from the front profile would take care of that. For the other end, we still need to close this off. And we will also need to trim off the excess. This is so that we can build an L-shaped surface for the extrude to terminate against. Confirm the sketch. Activate the Surface tab, go to Create, Extrude. Select the sketch and extrude the surface symmetrically. Activate the Solid tab. Pre-select the profile and begin the Extrude command. Choose two object for extent. We want the extrude to terminate up against the newly created surface body. You can choose either the faces or the whole surface body. If you choose one of the faces, remember to select the Chain Faces option. Let's remove the object and try choosing the whole surface body. Again, do this by hovering over an edge. Selecting either the faces or the whole surface body will produce the same result. In this case, no offset is required since that was already built into the sketch. Let's take a look at using split lines and offset face. Begin with the sketch from the top. Go to Modify, Split Face. For faces to split, select these three faces. For splitting tool, click on the select box and select the sketch. Now that we have these split regions, let's go to Modify, Offset Face. Select the three split faces and enter an offset distance. Everything looks fine until we take a look at the cross section. The bottom face of the recess is at an angle to the horizontal. This is because the offset face command performs the operation in a direction that is perpendicular to the original face that it was offset from. You can use the move command to rectify this. Besides using offset, there is another way to create a cut by using these split faces. First, we need to create a copy of these three faces. Activate the surface tab. Go to create. Offset. Uncheck the Chain Selection option. Select these three faces. Set the offset distance to 0 and confirm. This will create an exact copy of the three faces in the same position. Go to Create, Thicken. Check the Chain Selection option and select the copied face. Adjust the distance and set the operation to cut. Adjust the end face accordingly. Let's try creating the split lines from the front. Again, we have a profile of how the recess will look like from the front. Perform the split face. The problem here is that the split extends all the way to the edge of the circular face. We will need to create another split line using the sketch.
This will split out the required region. Repeat the same steps as discussed previously to create the recess. The next method we are going to use involves slicing the body from two of the primary planes. I have prepared the two sketches as shown. Go to Modify, Split Body. Select the main body as a body to split. For splitting tool, select this sketch line. Confirm the feature. You can go to the bodies folder and see the result. At this point, it would be helpful to hide the body that needs to be retained. Repeat the split body command using the next sketch. Again, hide the body that needs to be retained. The remaining body represents the volume of the recess. If we select the body and press delete, this will not create a step in the timeline. This will pose a problem if we need to come back to make changes. To add a step in the timeline, right-click on the body in the browser and select Remove. This records a remove step in the timeline. Unhide the rest of the bodies. Activate the Solid tab. Go to Modify, Combine. Select both the bodies and combine them into one single solid. There is another command that uses the same logic and is a lot more convenient. In this command, the split body and the combine commands are executed in the background. This is the boundary fill command. Instead of splitting the body, let's use these sketches to create surfaces. The boundary fill command can only take surfaces and solid bodies. Go to Create, Boundary Fill. Select the two surface bodies and the solid body as tools. At this point, the command intelligently intersects all these bodies and calculates the resultant cells. These regions are available for selection in the form of these checkboxes. At this point, I will recommend that you change the display environment to dark sky. This is so that when you hover the cursor over a checkbox, you can more easily see which cell you are selecting. In this case, we need to select the cells that we need. Click on the Select box. When I hover the cursor over this box, I can see the volume that represents the recess being highlighted. So that will be the volume that we do not need. Proceed to check the rest of the boxes. Check Remove Tools, as we do not need them after this operation. If we check the bodies folder, we can see that the boundary fill command automatically combines the cells that we selected. Let's try using a sweep. For the profile, create a cross-sectional sketch on this face. Go to Create, Sweep. Select the profile. For path, click on the select box and with the change selection option checked, select this path. Choose perpendicular for orientation. This will ensure that as the path turns, the profile will also turn accordingly. Let's try the pipe command. The pipe command is a sweep command that comes with ready-made cross-sections. For the sweep command, we were able to use a path by selecting the edge on the side. However, for the pipe command, we do need to make sure that the path cuts through the center of the profile. Let's create a sketch on the right plane.
project these three edges. For this end of the path, we need it to be a slight distance away from the base. An easy way to do this is to break the project link. Hover the cursor over this point and the project link icon should appear. Click on this and delete. Now you can adjust this point accordingly. Confirm the sketch and go to Create, Pipe. Check on Chain Selection and select the path. The most appropriate section will be the square section here. Take note that since the path is right on the surface of the body, the final cut section would actually be half of a square. Let's try using the emboss command. We will start with a sketch from the top. Go to create, emboss. Select the profile. For faces, click on the select box and check the tangent chain option. When you hover over any one of the three faces, all three are highlighted. Change the effect to deboss. Adjust the depth and confirm. If we look at the top view, we can see that the recess does not actually coincide with the sketch profile. This is because the emboss command wraps the sketch around a curved surface. Think of the sketch profile as a sticker that you paste onto the top surface of the knob. The original length of the sketch is retained, so you will need to take this into account when you use the emboss command. Looking at the cross section, you can see that the emboss command also works normal to the original face, just like offset. So we will need to adjust this face. Now that you have come this far, I want to thank you for your attention. Hope that you have approached this video in the right spirit. This is about attacking a problem from different perspectives, even though some of these methods are not efficient at all. Through exposure to different methods, this will allow you to arrive at the best possible solution every time when faced with a problem.